In movies, sequels are almost never better than the original. In games, it's kind of mixed. Jurassic World Evolution 2, however, is shaping up to be a big improvement over the original. In this video, I'm going to list 10 ways in which Jurassic World Evolution 2 is already better than the first. Alternative title could have been 10 reasons to get excited for Jurassic World Evolution 2, because that's basically also what this is, but let's be honest, we're already excited. I'm not just going to list 10 things, I'm also going to be ranking them, with the number 10 being the least important to me personally, and the number 1 being the most exciting for me. Hello everyone and welcome on board the hype train for Jurassic World Evolution 2. It's less than 2 months away, but that still feels like a long time, so we're bridging the gap with some fun Jurassic World Evolution 2 content in the meantime. Obviously, we haven't played the game yet, but we already know quite a bit about it and how it is improving on the original. And I really want to highlight how it compares to that first game for people who are still on the fence about the sequel, either because they were disappointed in the first game and now don't have hope for the second, or because they did love the original and don't really see how buying and playing a whole new game is going to be worth their time and money. If you agree with these improvements, give the video a like, and of course, if I missed a big improvement in my list, in your opinion, comment it down below. Number 10, we're starting off with something that is probably higher up on the list for a lot of people, but for a sandbox player like myself, it's just less important. That being more management, more things to do in the game. Jurassic World Evolution 2 introduces staff management. Not all scientists are the same, and we get to hire our own scientists, finding the ones that really fit the needs of our parks. We have to balance their workload, we have to assign them to incubations, we have to train them to increase their skill set. That in and of itself gives the player a lot more to do, which fills the gaps in the gameplay that you did experience during the first game. On top of that, we have more in-depth guest management, as guest needs are more complicated than the first time around. The four different Different types of guests come into our parks with different wants and expectations that we must fulfill to get that high rating. This means thinking more carefully about the layout of our parks, placing the right types of buildings by the right attractions, and enhancing those buildings with appropriate internal modules to maximize guest satisfaction. Personally, I've only done the campaign of the first game twice, and I've only done a handful of challenge modes. While I agree with the observation that there's a lot of downtime, it's, it's a bit too much of a waiting game, it never really bothered me that much, again because I'm mostly a sandbox girl, which is why this improvement ranks quite low for me. But I think it's going to be a really impactful change for a lot of players, and it's going to make campaign mode a lot more rewarding for people. Number 9. Jurassic World Evolution still looks great. Still, when I play, I look around and I think to myself, this looks fantastic. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is going to spoil us with the graphics. It looks so, so good. All of the recent things we've been seeing is a feast for the eyes, but nothing more so than the dinosaurs themselves. The textures on the dinosaurs and the subtle model changes are gorgeous and right away elevate them to a more lifelike level. The new game just looks a lot better and that's really saying something when you consider how beautiful the first game is. Number 8. Frontier introduces some very important quality of life fixes. Some that make me feel like they've literally been in the trenches on Reddit and Twitter these past years taking notes, and some frankly brilliant ideas that I don't think anybody in the community even thought to ask for. In the sequel, we can move buildings after placing them, which really helps fix the layout of your park as it is expanding. We get a mass delete tool with which we can select what type of object we want to delete within the radius of the brush. Time controls are going to allow us to speed through lulls in the gameplay. We can incubate multiple dinosaurs at a time and directly fly them out from the hatchery to their enclosure through remote release, rather than going through the song and dance of releasing them first, tranquilizing them, and then moving them into their enclosure. Tour tracks can cross guest paths and have fences built over them, generating a gate, when before, we could only build the fence first and then have the tour go through. 
And one thing I especially like as a quality of life fix is that dinosaurs simply cannot break out of a fence that has a higher security rating than the dinosaur itself. The number 7 used to be ranked much higher. News from last week forced me to switch things up a little bit. Number 7 is the new skin system. It was brought to light last week that we only get one pattern per dinosaur species, as opposed to multiple patterns to choose from. So for our dinosaurs, we can pick the base skin color, either with or without a pattern, just one pattern, and then we can change the coloration of that pattern. That is, however, still better than the first game, which only gave us six preset dinosaur skins to choose from. The fact that we can mix and match base skin color with pattern color or no pattern obviously gives a lot more options than six, and I'm still very excited to try out different combinations to find my favorites. I ranked it lower, not because of how it compares to what we thought we were getting, but just in a vacuum, even if we had never known about the possibility of multiple patterns, the skin system as it is, as it is going to be, just isn't as exciting as the other things on the list coming up next. Number 6, more dinosaur species. I made a video quite a while ago, even before Jurassic World Evolution 2 was even announced, about how the sequel could be the best dinosaur park builder ever, and one of the 25 things I listed was at least 50 dinosaurs in the base roster. Well, Jurassic World Evolution 2 went above and beyond in giving us over 75 species at launch. Old favorites returning and exciting new species. The first game launched with only, quote unquote, only 37 species in the base game and an additional 11 species available through the deluxe packs and the Fallen Kingdom update. Throughout its development, the roster was increased to 68 species in total with several DLCs. So the sequel is starting out with more dinosaur species than the first game ended with. Quality over quantity, of course, and we'll get to that at number 5. But I do value having a lot of species to choose from. For making massive parks full of dinosaur variety, or to mix things up between parks. With over 75 species to choose from, you could have 3 parks of 25 species each, which is already a nice variety, and not have any overlap in species between those 3 parks. That alone is a way to give a park its own feel and identity, and to inspire your creativity in new ways. Rounding off the top 5 is that quality over quantity when it comes to the dinosaurs. Number 5 is, simply put, better dinosaurs. Better in the sense that we're already seeing more social behaviors to breathe more life into the animals. We know hunting is going to be dynamic, it's not going to be two creatures waiting to sync up so they can start a preset animation, it's going to be fluid and hunts can even fail. Dinosaur fights are not going to be a static exchange of bites, they're going to be really reacting to each other. And, of course, at the very least, we've been told that the raptors will be able to put on a coordinated attack, working together as a pack to take down prey, or even take down a T-Rex. Finally, dinosaurs will have territories within their enclosures. They'll look for parts of the enclosure that suit their needs and claim that as their own, and they'll share it peacefully with some species and fight for it with others. And there is genuine herding behavior in that, with stronger and bigger animals in a multi-species herd defending the herd as a whole. I mean, I wouldn't blame you if all of this gets you so excited that you'd have no choice but to rank it higher on your list of improvements. Because the dinosaurs in the first game were a little bland and stilted, especially at launch when they couldn't even sleep. All of these new behaviors is going to make it a lot more entertaining to spend more time watching your dinosaurs. They're gonna feel so much more real. The reason it's not ranked higher for me is probably because I'm just very easy to please in this regard. And again, my personal gameplay style is more focused on the aesthetics of a park. That being said, I feel like all of these improvements to the dinosaur's behavior might completely change how I experience the game. It may very well cause me to come down to ground level a lot more to just watch and enjoy the dinosaurs, and maybe have them fight more often too, since it's going to be more exciting and unpredictable now. Number 4, Aviaries and Lagoons. 
It took the first game until the Return to Jurassic Park DLC, a year and a half after launch, to include the aviary. We never actually got to see the Mosasaurus, which was one of the biggest gripes the community had with the game, since the Mosa was such a prominent part of the Jurassic World movie, the movie that revived the franchise and was ultimately at the root of this game coming to fruition. This time around, we're getting both, we're getting them at launch, and we're getting them in a better manner than the aviary in the first game. That's three improvements in one, I'd consider that a bargain deal. You see, the Pteranodon from Return to Jurassic Park were just pretty models in a looped animation. They didn't have any needs. They didn't rest, they didn't eat, they couldn't become agitated, they couldn't interact with anything else in the park. In Jurassic World Evolution 2, the flying and marine reptiles work with AIs similar to the dinosaurs. They need feeders to survive, and at the very least, the flying reptiles can escape their aviary and claim territory in your parks from where they terrorize the guests and the dinosaurs. We don't know yet if the marine reptiles have any interaction with anything outside of their tank. However, regardless of whether they can or can't, for me the wow factor of having a lagoon in the park and watching something as awe-inspiring as the Mosasaurus swimming around is enough to have the hype go off the charts for me. The fact that we can customize the aviaries and the lagoons for some much-needed variety within and between parks is the cherry on top. We've reached the top three of the best improvements in Jurassic World Evolution 2 over its predecessor. These are the three things I am most excited about. Number three, Chaos Theory Mode. Jurassic World Evolution 2 gives us a whole new game mode on top of Campaign, Sandbox and Challenge Mode. Now, I am definitely a Sandbox girl. I've played the first game for over a thousand hours pause for shock. And like I said, I've only done the campaign twice and a couple of challenge modes. I like building pretty parks and sandbox is simply the perfect place for that. Campaign is fun, but doesn't have a lot of replay value. And challenge mode, I, I simply don't like. It's either too easy or if you go up in difficulty, I find it too frustrating. There's no middle ground for me to really enjoy it. So I don't doubt sandbox will be my go-to again. But I'm really, really looking forward to the new Chaos Theory mode, because I love this franchise so, so much. The first movie is my favorite movie of all time, and with the exception of Fallen Kingdom, I enjoy all of the movies. Which is why I think it is so cool that we will be able to step into the timeline of the movies, take control of the situations, and see where that takes us. I can't wait to play out these what-if scenarios for all of the movies. I think it's going to really suck you into the world, it's going to be super nostalgic, and I think, I hope, there's going to be quite a bit of replayability to it. Because in theory, you can manipulate the situation to have a different outcome every time. That is chaos theory after all. Changing one thing changes everything down the line. We don't know much yet about this game mode, so all of this is pretty theoretical, but my hopes are high for it. At a base level, it's just an overall improvement that we get four game modes to play instead of three, especially because challenge mode has proven to not be everyone's cup of tea. Number two, I've summarized as better locations, because this improvement over the first game is twofold. First and foremost, Frontier has already said that the maps in Jurassic World Evolution 2 are going to be bigger than the first game, so we can build our dream parks. Of course, that doesn't mean all maps in the sequel will be bigger than the biggest map in the first game. There's still going to be some maps of limited size for the challenge of it. But I trust that we will be getting some maps bigger than Nublar from the first game. It's one of the most requested things from the first game, and they've shown that they've listened to the community, so it would be silly for that not to be the case. But better maps means more than bigger maps. I'm also talking about biome diversity. Jurassic World Evolution 1 was exclusively set on tropical islands. While this made sense within the franchise at the time, the bright green grass and the same trees all over the place did get a little exhausting. For the sequel, we are getting a total of five different biomes. Taiga, desert, temperate, 
tropical, and one more mystery biome that has yet to be revealed. What this means is a lot more variety between your parks. It's also going to inspire you to build differently, to try different building styles and use different dinosaurs to really lean into the biome you are in. On top of that, each biome comes with its own weather threats, like snowstorms in taiga and sandstorms in desert. So the different biomes are literally going to play differently. They're going to challenge you in new ways. It's going to be exciting to watch those weather effects play out in our parks, especially snowstorms, which completely transform the look of the landscape. Number one, the biggest and most exciting improvement, in my opinion, is park customization, which is an umbrella term that covers a lot of cool things that are finally going to give us more creative freedom. And of course I would pick this as my number one. I mostly play this game for the purpose of building awesome parks, which I then love sharing with you guys. I've actually actually gotten a big kick out of testing my own creativity and pushing the creative limits of the first game even since before starting my YouTube channel. But getting more creative options to play around with is definitely something I am looking forward to. When I'm talking about park customization, I'm talking about the new customizable buildings, individual decorations, the rocks that can be turned 360 degrees on the X and Y axis, and more plant variety and terrain paints per biome. The buildings are available in small, medium and large, which is already a big improvement, but the real fun is how we can customize the look of them, changing the roof, the facade, the placement of the door, the decorations out front and the signs. We're also getting full color control, being able to select colors from the entire color spectrum for several sections of the building. And on top of that, recolorable lights. If you've been here for a while, you know how much I love recolorable lights. Decorations were sorely missed from the first game, but we are finally getting them. We don't know the full extent of the decorations yet, that tab is still a bit of a mystery, but we've already seen promising things like planters, the Spinosaurus skull, individual lights and flags, and tables and chairs. The customization of our dinosaur exhibits has also been improved. We're getting more rocks to start with, but on top of that we can turn those rocks every which way, which means you'll get a lot more use out of them, because depending on what part you'll have sticking out of the ground, it's going to look like an entire entirely different rock. And then there's also the expanded foliage and terrain paint options. Seemingly six instead of four per biome. My only small gripe with that being how similar at least the desert paints are to one another. Park building is going to get a whole lot more time consuming, but also much more fun. I cannot wait to play around with it and November 9th can't come soon enough. Comment down below what your favorite improvements are. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you want to see what kind of creative creative parks I will be building with these improved tools, then subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the anticipation. If you absolutely must do that now, I suppose it's, it's a scheduling conflict, isn't it? No, I mean, no, if you must, please, by all means, continue. There you go. He's so doing it for the attention. He keeps stopping and looking at me. One eternity later. I mean, I wouldn't blame you if all of this got you so excited that you'd have no choice but to rank it higher on your list of improvements. You're shitting me! I <laughs> He's seriously doing it to thwart my efforts of recording. This is proof. I waited so long and he was done. And now he's doing it again. <laughs> you drama queen. You attention monger.